is not the all-time NCAA leader for nothing, Jim. Right. Boy, you give him the open look, and you're in serious trouble. That's why I, I thought that they'd set screens on his man and just let him take jump shots. And they're now 7 of 11 from the perimeter. Odin again. Horford down inside. Odin takes him. Muscling it in. This is the best. Now, you've seen Odin play a lot this year. This has got to be well, the best you've ever seen him. Absolutely, because he's having an opportunity to stay on the floor and get in some kind of rhythm. But, Jim, he's breathing heavily. I don't know if he can go a couple of more minutes without getting some relief. Odin with 17 points. Eight already in this half. And a timeout called by the Gators, which will give Odin a little spell. That probably helps Odin, to be quite honest with you. 49-40. Gators. Well, you can draw a line right past Odin here and put him up against the three rotating big guys. He has outscored them and almost matched them in rebounds. What about the defense on Odin here? Well, I'm really surprised, as I said before, once he puts the ball on the floor, that there's not some kind of double-down tactic on him, but he's quick. He's got excellent footwork on the inside. Billy Donovan is saying, I realize he's played some 30-minute games, but I'm going to make him play this one 30 minutes against three different people and see how well he stands up. He's done a great job staying out of foul trouble. Give Thad Mata a lot of credit for the way he's game-planned in that regard. He's played all but two minutes, and he has only one foul. Now, we looked it up during the break. He has seven games this year of at least 35 minutes of action, led by a 39-minute game against Northwestern. So he has gone much of the way a number of times, and their hopes rest on his massive shoulders. Our aerial coverage here in Atlanta brought to you by Goodyear. Here in Georgia, Georgia Dome. Georgia, the Peach State. Tonight we celebrate a game that began with a peach basket. And you look at the biggest difference when it comes to baskets, Billy. At two for 14 from three, Ohio State is going to have to help Odin out with some perimeter shooting. Got eight on the shot clock coming out of the break, and Brewer knows it. Puts it up. Back to the rim. Long board. Butler quickly to Conley. Other side he goes. And every time there's a timeout, Odin comes out fresh. You see that when he catches, he will throw it quickly. But he will not. And he was held that time. That's going to be on Horford. Now he has three. You see Spates two, is in the ball. Two, two on Horford. Jim Spates is in the ball game again. Billy Donovan going with this. You know, it, it's a, a, almost a reversal. We'll see the grab here by Horford, knowing that if Odin gets this ball, he puts it in easily. The third Brewer. foul, and that's going to be again with Ohio State. Jim, in 1962, Ohio State came in the championship as the number one team. Cincinnati had beaten them a year before, and a guy by the name of Paul Hold from Cincinnati was 11 for 18, 22 points, 19 rebounds, the MOP. It reminds me of what Odin's doing tonight against the number one team. And his man guarded him that night was the great Jerry Lucas. So uh, it has been done before, and Odin's putting on quite a show. Zone action now by Florida. Conley. He's been quiet since the early going. Had two of the first three baskets. Nothing since. And a foul outside. And that one is on Brewer. His first. Yeah, Harris really surprised him there. But instead of taking the jump shot, powered on by for the inside shot. Known primarily as a pull-up jump shooter. Here's the 2-3 zone again. Conley steps up. Come inside and he'll be heading to the line. He is really amazing how he uses that body and he can go right or left hand. And that one on Spates, his second Thursday, a new CSI. Fasten your seatbelt for a case of road rage Vegas style. You don't want to miss the new CSI Thursday on CBS America's number one network. So Conley with one more coming. Jim's had such an incredibly great tournament. That uh, tremendous game he played against Xavier. 11 points in overtime in that ball game with his buddy on the bench with the five fouls. Of course, he and his buddy, they haven't lost in the postseason, Billy, in so long when you take into account their three state titles at Lawrence North, Indiana state titles. You go back four years since they lost any kind of postseason game. Side space. Oh, that is a shot that Ohio State never did. Mm -hmm. Bagmata turns around and says, Where did that come from? Never expected that shot. 
Again, the 2-3 zone. Just trying to keep now Horford out of more foul trouble. Lewis for a jump shot, but he's over here with Brewer. He ought to get on the other side. Get on the side with a smaller defender. Conley, good head fake, goes inside, and it's Brewer. Brewer comes down to help out and takes it away from Odin. Odin never really had a handle on it. And Humphrey, that one rattles out. Space gets it back. And Odin crashes for it. Lewis wants to run. Spates probably should have brought that one back out, Jim. Dean the possession. Lewis in the paint. Nice comeback here by Ohio State. They're looking like they're solid. This is a team, Jim, as you pointed out, has been behind by big margins in this NCAA tournament and has not given in. They're putting pressure on right now, and they have not done it with great perimeter shooting, so that's yet to come, maybe. They have mastered the second-half comeback. They've come back four times in the second half to win in this tournament alone, including 17 down to Tennessee and 11 down to Xavier. Horford. Oh, Odin. They got to count it. it? Well, they shouldn't. I think that was still on the way up. And you see what Odin's doing. He's playing a one-man zone, no matter if it's man-to-man -man or zone defense. He's going to play right down inside. What do you think? I think that that was a good block. I think that he went up whatever height they needed to pick that one off. The ball was on the way up. You see Noah is down still. Four points, three fouls. That's the second whistle on Harris. So Horford. And they come back, the Buckeyes, with Othello Hunter, 6'9", junior out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Has been playing basketball all that long, although he was raised in ACC country. He preferred bagging groceries with friends at a local supermarket there in Winston-Salem. Then finally, his junior year in high school, he got involved in hoops and loved it. And he's uh, been coming on this season. Another big presence inside for the Buckeyes. He had two early fouls in this game. Back to man-to-man -to -man goes Florida. See if they get the ball to Odin. Spates on him. A little high-low action. There's the foul inside. Number three on Spates coming. And Billy Donovan wanted to trade fouls, but he's getting everything called one way. He can't believe it. Now, you know, what What in a situation like this, Jim, you start to do as a coach, you start working the referees. How come it's only one way? See if you can't pick up a cheap one. Not to intimidate, but try to get their attention. Look at Lewis. How far out is that? Too far. And Horford skies. Odin just a little off on the timing with his jump. And Odin late getting back down the court. He's about to get the under 12 whistle to get a breather. And that's tipped by Conley. And they'll go to the benches. <laughs> Odin with a double double now. 17 and 10. Jim Nance and Billy Packer here at the national championship game. Florida trying to go back to back, trying to become the first since Duke, 91-92. Trying to find its special place in history as the only starting five to win back-to-back -back titles. And the Gators up nine. They led by 11 at halftime. It's Green. Jim, there's the shot that's available, and it'd be available for Green or Humphrey. Nice move, but Horford can't get it to drop. He'd like to have that one back. Again, Odin owning the inside. He's got 11 rebounds. That's because he's now out there playing to help out on the jump shooter, so the jump shooter ought to be getting the ball and shooting more. Hasn't been the usual game we've seen out of Conley, is it? No. Maybe because he wants to keep things clear on the inside for his partner. Oh, here he goes. Oh, oh, right good call, good. James. Yes. The young man knows how to play. That time, Odin was out the top of the key instead of being down the low post, so Conley took advantage of the room. Really, that's his first basket since three minutes into the game. Reach in coming up, and that'll be the third on Conley if it's on him. No, it's going to be on Lewis. Lewis. Yep. Ooh, Conley looked. He was a bit skittish about it. Well, what happened to Lewis? The same thing happened to Harris down on the other end. They didn't expect Brewer to go ahead and take that one all the way in, right into Odin's face. Noah back on the floor. 
That was Lewis's second. Spate sits. Now this is going to have to be Noah time, Jim. He's sat on the bench a lot. He's got to be completely rested. Part of Billy Donovan's strategy with a 10-minute mark now. Odin has not been out of the game in the second half. Played 18 minutes in the first half. Noah, as we know, has got a lot of energy and can run. Let's see if they try to get him moving up and down the court. Only taken three shots in this game. Made one. Here's Humphrey. Firing again. But a good defense by Butler. You got to go ahead and play him for the jump shot. Nice pump fake by Humphrey. Gets the lead back up to 10. Seems like every time Ohio State gets it down within that one basket working room, a dagger shot comes out. Oh, another nice fake. Drive in, same move that worked last time, not this one, and it's knocked out by Odin. Little jab step fake that time by Connolly. He can go right or left. He is really a load to try to guard when he's got to clear out. Gator starting five on the floor. It's green. Where's he going? No, no place to go. Nope, that's stuck. Lewis. Pass Brewer. Hunter inside. Blocked by Horford. Second try. No. Odin trying to keep it alive. And Horford comes Beautiful away play. With it. Here we go. Back to Horford. What a, oh, what a great play by Horford. Super hustle on his part. Wow, after a couple of close range misses by the Buckeyes. I say a, a fresh Odin gets that ball, Jim. Conley in. And a foul this time. And it's on Horford. Now he has three. Good dish, but Horford made that play with tremendous hustle. And as I said, Odin has got to be wearing down a little bit, or he might have been able to get that rebound. He had decent position. Conley a little sh shaken up on that play. He'll shoot a pair. His third, Horford. Coach Thad Monop digging in, kneeling, watching. And the foul situation, Ohio State not in any danger. Remember, Conley had a couple of quick ones in that first half. Four Gators with three. Jim Conley of all Big Ten tournament, as we know, and, and uh, on that all-freshman team, he was the MOP of the South region, leading that team in two great ball games he played there. Reaches in from the floor, back to Odin. There's Conley being able to get so low to the floor. Butler puts up the three. Huge. Tipped up Hunter, no. He's had a couple of close tries that just aren't falling. There's Brewer's versatility again, being able to get that rebound among the big guys. Green to the corner. Humphrey. Right. Didn't even time. have it in his hands. Richard. Fouled on the way, and that basket counts. That'll be the second on Odin. That was a fatigue foul, Jim. Odin standing there, no longer as fresh as he was. And the rebound is captured right in front of him. Richard, much fresher, able to get it back in. Number two on him. I wonder if Thad Mata is going to take a chance. Give Odin just about two minutes here. I realize he's behind, but the big guy needs uh, just a break. He's been going up against three men all night long, three good players. Ivan Harris checks in, but it's not for Odin, it's for Hunter. That shot of Humphreys from the corner just glanced the very side of the backboard. You know when he got possession of the ball, Jim, as he was releasing it, yeah. he really didn't have it in his hands when he went up for the shot. Has Richard been a factor for this team? We've got about six men in the SEC. How many teams does he start for, huh? Maybe every one, <laughs> except this one. He had 17 in the first round win, 16 against the Bruins. Lighty, fresh, and he shows it. What a difference when you've got a fresh set of legs. And Lighty, who was such a factor on green in the Georgetown game, played a super game. Green, last minute gives it up, it's right to Butler. He slips, up ahead, Conley, lob, Odin, not able to get it. He was off balance. Right back, and instead will shoot two. 
You know, I can't say enough about how hard Odin's working. He's got a champion's heart, this kid. Still only 18 years of age, although he may look a little older than that, but he is showing some heart tonight. Just picked up the fourth foul on Noah. So a big one there. You can relive all of the great moments and game highlights or replay any game from the NCAA tournament with NCAA March Madness on demand. It's free at NCAAsports.com slash March Madness on demand. You say facially he maybe looks a little older. His mother was telling us that she's had to produce his birth certificate so often. And there is his mother, Zoe, and his brother, Anthony. She's had to produce the birth certificate so often for like AAU competition sure. and other things that it's tattered and and all wrinkled from all that handling. <laughs> that might have got to take the timeout. Special lady though, her son and the Buckeyes gonna take a timeout. They're down 11 as they were at the half. Jim, this would be a huge foul, except for one thing. Billy Donovan has three guys to work with. You can see Noah reach it. Look at him pull his hand back quickly, hoping he didn't pick up the fourth, but he was caught. Buckeyes showing a little backcourt pressure here coming out of this last timeout called by Ohio State. Well, Hodge has got a tough responsibility here now. Conley is going to be low to the floor, and he's a good stealer. There it is. Conley then almost sideswiped by Hodge. That was a move that you anticipated on the simple reason Conley, Jim, it's amazing how low to the floor he can play. And Hodge not experienced. Billy Donovan got caught there against that press and couldn't get Green back in the ball game. But Conley, he plays so low to the floor, both offensively and defensively, you just can't use your crossover dribble against him. Great job by this young guy. One and one coming up for Conley. It's not like Hodge doesn't have any quickness either, but he retreats to the bench and one more coming for Connolly. Well what that is Jim is that you're not used to a guy that can be that low to the floor with his hands. It, it is amazing how how he can get down there I and mean, sometimes when he dribbles his hands are just a matter of inches away from the ball and the floor. His mom and dad.